to another episode of Should I Build It from the RC Printer YouTube channel. I'm your host Jordan Visco. Today I've got here the Mini Rescuer from 3D Sets. I'm going to talk a little bit about what makes this a great RC project, what some of the benefits, drawbacks are, maybe some tips for your own build. And remember if you're looking for ideas for fun RC projects to build, guides on how to build them, kits or parts to make it easy, definitely check out our website at rcprinter.com. One of the best features of the Mini 4x4 Rescuer build is that it's a fantastic RC project for a beginner or even for a kid to try as their first build. 3D Sets has done an awesome job of creating a simplified project that still has a lot of great features and details. I 3D printed this build, but this was actually put together by my son Parker. He was actually homesick from school one day, and uh, instead of lounging around watching videos, I convinced him to put this build together, and he had a great time doing it. He was able to get it mostly complete all by himself, however he did need uh, help with some of the electronics at the end, and uh, he also had a little bit of trouble with getting some of the windows and doors functioning properly, but with a minimum amount of help from myself, we were able to complete the build no problem. Now compared to some of the other 3D sets builds that we've done, uh, the Rescuer has a super streamlined design. It only requires about 115 different fasteners to put it together, whereas some of the other cars have upwards of 600 or even 800 fasteners in their kits. So that alone is going to make this one a lot easier to put together and it's definitely helpful for someone who's younger or just starting out with building RC vehicles. And you still end up with a pretty impressive project at the end. So let's talk about the electronics for a little bit. You have the option with the Rescuer to install one or two motors. Uh, if you decide to just install one, you're going to get a two-wheel drive vehicle, but if you install a motor in the front and the rear, you're going to end up with a vehicle that's four-wheel drive. Just remember when you're hooking these two motors up that they're pointed the opposite direction, so if you want them to both go the same way when you press forward on your controller, you're going to need to make sure that the positive and negative wires are hooked up opposite on the front and the rear. The build uses electric TT motors with built-in gearboxes and they are direct drive onto the axles, which is nice, improving the traction of the vehicle. And it does drive quite nice, but those TT motors are kind of slow, so you're not going to be winning any land speed records here. Now another great feature of this vehicle is you have a few different options of how you want to power it. For me, I have lots of 2S LiPo batteries at home, so I decided to install one of those. But you can also just install a battery holder for AA batteries, which you can easily find off Amazon. And then you don't have to worry about getting LiPos, which can be kind of expensive, and a charger for them as well. And it just makes the whole build a lot simpler if you're not already deep into RC. So for a servo, it just uses this inexpensive little micro servo that you can see up front here. And if you wanted, you could also install rear wheel steering on the back. Uh, that's not something that we've included here, but upgrading to four wheel steering would be just a minimal cost with those inexpensive servos. Printing the Rescuer is a breeze with the files provided by 3D Sets. They've pre-arranged all the different pieces onto build plates, and if you use a Prusa 3D printer, they've actually generated G-code files for you as well, so you don't even have to go through the whole slicing process. Now when you're printing, you actually have the option of doing uh, many of the pieces in multicolor prints. And so the way that works is that you print a few layers and then the print automatically stops and then you can switch the filament to a different color. So you can see for something like this top hatch here where we initially started the print in black, we stopped it and then continued in the brown color and then stopped and then started in the white again. And you can see there's a number of different pieces like this here, uh, the door panels, the hood, and a bunch of the parts of the back, the wheels as well. Those are all multicolor prints and it's something that really gives it its unique look and style. It also has some really neat features like these fire extinguishers on the back and also you can see we've done multicolored rear tail lights here. The doors are fully functional and the interior is fairly basic but it's something that's pretty easy to put together for a beginner as well. For the window glass, we've used clear binder covering, which you can pick up at any office supply store. And 3D Sets gives you window templates that you can print out and easily trace onto the plastic. And then you can simply cut it out with any pair of scissors. 
So one other really great feature about the Rescuer is how little it's going to cost to put it together when you compare it to other RC projects. And keeping the cost down is something that's going to be really important, especially if this is your first RC build. Most RC builds are going to require some form of shocks, but this one actually has integrated 3D printable shocks. Which obviously don't work as well, but they're fine for a first model. Instead of investing in standard RC tires, this one uses LEGO tires, which you may have on hand or you might be able to find fairly easily. Or you can find the model file online and you can actually 3D print your own at a TPU, which is what we've done here, making them pretty much free. And for a model like this, which isn't meant for high performance, they're more than fine. Now also, as far as a radio controller goes, you don't need anything too fancy. I've used my Flysky GT5 that I use for pretty much everything else, and we sell those at rcprinter.com. But you can definitely get away with something much more cheaper off Amazon. Any two-channel radio controller should do, because all it needs to do is go forwards and backwards and steer left and right. If you check the 3D Sets non-printed parts list, they're going to have some great options for you in there as well. Alright, let's go ahead and take this thing out, and we'll show you what it can do. So in conclusion, should you build it? Well, I think this would be a great build for someone who's kind of building an RC model for the first time, for a teenager or even a younger kid who wants to put it together with a little bit of help from their mom or dad. So far it seems to be a pretty durable model and it's very fun to build and it looks great. Also because you can 3D print so many different parts of it, it can be a fairly inexpensive build. The motors are cheap, the servos are cheap, and if you power it with AA batteries, you don't even have to worry about getting into RC batteries and chargers. But what this model is not going to be is a very high performance RC machine. You're not going to go super fast, you're not going to win any races. It does have four wheel drive, which is kind of nice for crawling around outside, but just make sure you know what you're getting into. This thing is really more meant to be like a toy than it is a high performance vehicle. I think it'd be a great gift for a first timer on their birthday or maybe Christmas. It'd be awesome for them to learn all about how to 3D print all these different pieces, how the electronics go together, and it could be a really fun project for an adult and a kid to do together and spend some quality time building something very cool. So I hope that helped, and until next time, if you're looking for any cool ideas of 3D printable RC projects like this one to build, kits, parts, or instructions how to build them, make sure you check us out at rcprinter.com.